One thing I'm going to show you, which is very interesting. This is the transition piece between the spheres and the pipes. If you take this rim right here and this upper rim, so this is the transition between, um, you know, this is where the smaller pipe uh, comes into the sphere and only one angle works, right, that, that, that with, with maximum, with optimum efficiency. And that angle, you can measure that angle from the rim, the top rim to the bottom rim. So if I was to draw a like a chord line from the top rim to the bottom rim, that uh, that optimum angle is fifty one point eight four degrees. Does that ring a bell? Fifty one point eight four degrees, which Remind I think might is. be an important hint here. Fifty one point eight four degrees. The optimum angle for this thing is the slope to base angle of the Great Pyramid. Exactly. So let that sink in. Does that possibly suggest maybe what the great maybe that somewhere in there is a hint? Now, are we getting into like, is there a connection here with angles and measurements to different frequencies? Oh yeah, yeah, and so so this is you know where. You know, again, there's no proof of anything. Maybe it's just a coincidence that it worked out that they tested various angles of these transition components, and it turned out that the optimum angle was 51.84 degrees. I don't know. Maybe it's a coincidence. It's the Great Pyramid. But if it's a not a coincidence, generator. if it's not, what does that mean? I don't know. Other than the fact that, is there a hint that there may be some kind of a function there to the Great Pyramid that involves... There's many theories that the pyramid was a power plant. I'm sure you're definitely yeah, aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this might support that. I don't know. Because, again, I I learned that and I thought, well, wait a second. 51.84? I've seen that before. Right. Yeah. What What do you make of the theories, like the, the Giza power plant theory? That the, well, the I, I, to be honest, I haven't really studied it. And I, I can't, you know, I, I don't like to make a pin, pe, present opinions on things that I haven't really studied into. But learning this fact was enough to make me decide to, to study further into that idea. Okay. But now, with the idea of how, is it possible that somehow this was involved in the utilization of plasma energy? You know, there have been reports of anomalous lights and even ball lightning associated with the apex of the pyramid. So again, that's more suggestive of what might have been going on here. And then I think in the ongoing research, these are the kinds of questions that are going to come up. Now, I'm going to show you something else here. When we look at, uh, oh, when we look at the, the Vajra. Stephen, is that something that you can find, uh, like balls of lightning near the Great Pyramid? Yeah, light, light uh, illuminations, things like that. Um, let's see here. Because there is, if you look at the diagram of the Great Pyramid and you look at all the different passageways that move through it and the chambers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it looks like something that was built very similar to something like this. And I know Ben talks about how the Great Pyramid gives off this like low frequency sort of this, it gives off some sort of frequency when when it's really quiet and it makes a some sort of a sound. Mm -hmm. Now, the, based on what we've seen, let's take a look at the Vajra again. Now, remember, you saw the thing that had the importance of the cone at the end of right. the technology. Yes. Look at the Vajra. Could this be a could this be your swirl chamber right here? And you've got the tube running down, and you've got the cones at each end, which would suggest that the Vajra was really just a component of a much larger machine. And maybe the insertion of the Vajra here, this, that we're basically just looking at the, the heart of a machine, just like, um, you know, just like Gary Ling said when he was pointing out the thunderstorm generator, well, here's the heart of the whole system, right? Where were these Vajras found? Oh. Do you know? Many places. Um, yeah, there's many depictions of them. Um, the Vajra inter Instrument of Cosmic Power, two examples. That one on the top looks super old. 
doesn't it though? Yeah. Perfectly symmetrical. Mm hmm. And look, you see, you've got the cones at the ends, you've got the tube running down the middle, and you've got the swirl chamber right there. Could these have been part of some kind of plasma technology for the control of plasma? I don't know. I'm just looking at it and calling attention to that, and I'm trying to encourage other people. I want Many intelligent minds, curious minds, innovative minds looking at this, and too many people looking at it, too many smart people investigating it, looking at it, seeing the potential of it for it to ever be bottled up again. That's part of what my goal is. So, and then, of course, Zeus holding the thunderbolt. It says, note the spiral form of the Vajra right here. And that, remember... When you had the, the, the imploded Taurus and the plasmas, the plasmoids, the mm -hmm. plasmas are whirling down in the form of a vortex, in a spiral vortex. And there we have a spiral vortex right there in Zeus's version of the Thunderbolt. So again, I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's, it's suggestive enough that maybe it warrants further investigation and consideration with an open mind. Mm. The Zeus hole, hurling a thunderbolt. Yeah, that looks just like that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have instinctively believed, and with some substantial evidence, that there has been a lot more sophisticated knowledge and scientific knowledge in the ancient world, even to possibly the prehistoric world. Exactly what form that took, I was never clear on. I didn't have any specific vision of what that was other than that there was enough there, there's enough out there that just doesn't fit into the prevailing explanations and paradigms of ancient history there's just too many things that are anomalous right now this is just one example here what was going on with with mithraism and what's interesting here you know again look at this the coil of the serpent is the is that's there's your there's your coil again. See, that could be, and it, 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 there's so much here um, to dive into that we couldn't really get into it all right now, obviously. There's your molten sea, and it's half of a, half of a sphere, mm -hmm. and all of the numbers are, the, are key numbers. Like Malcolm, when he studied those numbers, realized that those numbers were, again, what he did, these, these, the numbers like the 432 that shows up over and over again. That was the basis of the whole system of, of the divine kings of Samaria, the, the time cycles of the Vedas. It's also a number that's embedded in the Bible over and over again. 432. Yeah, 432. And those are the optimum sphere ratios of the spheres, 432. Um, so again, I, I don't know. It would be worth... Could they be just coincidence? Sure, could, I'm not could the angle of that thing being 51 degrees, just like the angle of the pyramids, be just a coincidence. I guess, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to complain that it proves anything. I'm not going to proclaim that. But I'm also going to consider what if it's not a coincidence? Might be a coincidence. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's got to be investigated not by somebody who's made up their mind beforehand, before they've looked at the evidence of what's possible or what's not possible. It's got to be investigated with an open mind. And, you know, you, again, with coincidence, it becomes a matter of how many coincidences are we allowed before we finally go, okay, this has gone beyond coincidence. That's the question. But when we're talking about, like, the, some of the ancient technologies that were lost from the ancient times, for for example, some of the stuff that Ben shows with the symmetry of yeah. these, these insane pieces of these vases mm -hmm. that are made out of the hardest stones and they're perfectly symmetrical within one one millionth of an inch. Um, and the Great Pyramids, the moving of these enormous multi-ton stones, not only moving them for hundreds of miles, but elevating them to the top of these pyramids. Is there any... Is, what, is there anything that suggests that this plasma technology, obviously this technology is great for emissions and having clean emissions, but is there any evidence that this stuff could actually be responsible for moving these massive stones or creating some of these perfectly symmetrical vases? Well, I, I have not pondered how 
this might apply to creating those perfectly symmetrical vases. Certainly, if we uh, maybe Steve would look up uh, look up stone cutting and plasma. Okay, so what's going on here? Oh, so they're cutting stone with plasma. Yeah, so they're already doing it. They're using plasmas to cut stone. Whoa. So, I mean, perhaps we could explore the idea that at least from the quarrying end, the cutting of the stone, perhaps was utilizing some kind of plasma technology. <laughs>